Hi, my name is Giri Venkatesan. In this video, I'm going to talk about Solus Pepsi Plus Cloud REST APIs and the API first design approach to build applications and plugins accessing and managing your EDA. If you think about EDA from a design first perspective, you start with the architecture of your event flows. Pubs Plus event portal then adds design, governance, and other event management capabilities to the Pubs Plus platform. Now, think about what can be accomplished with access to the event portal capabilities as REST APIs. It opens up the door for building applications and plugins for management and automation in an API first programmatic manner. That's cool, isn't it? Let's head to the home of Cloud REST APIs. All right, here it is. Uh, make a note of this URL, um, api.solus.dev. Uh, the getting started section will set the stage how to use the API in terms of authentication, error handling, versioning, pagination, and so on. And it also talks about the other versions of API, the legacy versions V0 and V1. So we are looking at V2 version, which is very specific to Event Portal version 2. Obviously, if your requirement spans across these versions, you have need for other objects captured in the V0 or V1 API, you are free to mix these API versions. Ultimately, these legacy APIs will be migrated over to V2 and uh, you know, uh, continue to monitor this portal. It will continue to get updated with the uh, new additions and migrations. Right? Now, heading into the group of APIs here, they are logically grouped as five buckets. The first one is machine control, basically lifecycle management APIs, you know, creating and managing your event brokers, client profiles, and soon we'll have other aspects as well. And then event portal designer set up APIs to build, extend, and manage your EDA. You know, we are looking at objects like event APIs, applications, events, and so on. And then you have the runtime aspect, right? The setup APIs to discover and model your EDA runtime involving event mesh environments messaging services, um, and so on, right? And then you have platform APIs. Basically, an API is to manage the stages of your EDA. You know, you may have a development setup, staging setup, testing setup, and so on, right? So to model and manage the stages of your EDA, this API comes into a picture. The last one is the billing API. That's about APIs to monitor and optimize your service utilization by extracting usage summary between two points in time, right? So let's dig into one simple example, applications. So you can see under the applications group, we have all this uh, get, post, put, delete based um, API services, right? On the right-hand side, you see the full details of uh, what this API is about, what kind of query parameters it takes, and then the error codes, the responses possible for this API, and also the payload that you can expect as a response in case of you know, success, right? On the rightmost sidebar, you see uh, snippets of code in various scripting and programming languages where you can invoke the API from within this uh, uh, API portal. So just by uh, specifying a token, you can hit on the try it button and you can see the results. Right? So this is a very interesting one. You know, it will get you quickly started with various programming language models and scripts. Please do check out the link that appears at the top to see a mission control plugin demo by our colleague Julian that uses mission control APIs to create and manage event brokers. Okay. So with that said, what we're going to do is we'll pick up a couple of use cases to demonstrate the use of Cloud REST APIs, basically plugins for IntelliJ, an IDE, and Confluence, a collaboration platform. The goal is to extend SDLC with real-time access to event portal. So as with any REST API, PubSub Plus Cloud REST APIs require API tokens for authentication and authorization. How do we generate the token? Let's uh, head to event portal. All right. So on the right-hand sidebar, if you scroll down, you see this user and account. Over there, there's a token management. Right? Uh, in the token management page, just click on the create token, give it a name, and grant all the appropriate permissions that you would care for in your application. Right. So could be read on certain objects or write on certain objects, maybe all read. In our case, we are going to require all read permissions because we're going to fetch the details of an event portal resource and present it within the IntelliJ or the Confluence plugin ecosystem. 
for simplicity, I've already generated a token. And that's ready for use. Okay. Now let's uh, talk about IntelliJ, right? So the IntelliJ plugin, but basically IntelliJ is a popular IDE, right? Uh, no question. Now the plugin focuses on uh, making the event portal resources available for view within the IDE. And behind the scene, it uses the Cloud REST APIs to fetch the object details. Now, um, where can I find more information about IntelliJ plugin? Yeah, here it is. You know, check out this Git page. It is an open sourced uh, plugin. You have the source code and other necessary information to get you started with in terms of installation and usage. Right? Now, installing the plugin is uh, um, straightforward. Under the plugins, um, you can see I've already installed the Solus Web Surplus Event Portal plugin. And this makes the plugin available, but there's a small configuration update we need to make that is in terms of a token. All right. So here's the uh, uh, configuration or settings uh, of the uh, plugin. So we have token and a web URL. Web URL will correspond to the base URL of your event portal. It could be console.solace.cloud or anything. So I am going to bring over the token that I generated and just paste it here. All right. Now, the token is updated, the plugin is ready for use. So what do I mean by saying ready for use? The only thing that you can do is reload, refresh, or fetch all the details. Okay, I'm gonna click on this load, refresh, event portal data button in the plugin. And you can see behind the scene, it's issuing all the REST API calls to retrieve event portal designer objects, starting from your domain, applications, event schemas, event API products. And you can expand on each of these things and see the details pertaining to each of these objects. So if I'm a developer, I'm building business logic around some um, around my EDA, it'll be handy to get the uh, uh, layout of all the designer objects, right? So this is real time, so I can refresh. If there's a change, it can be automatically fetched because these are all real time invocation. So this is one way of using Cloud REST APIs as a plugin in an external application, basically ecosystem. Here, without leaving the IDE, I'm able to get all the event portal resource details. Right? Um, so that's great. Please do check out the link that appears at the top to see a more detailed and complete demo of IntelliJ plugin for event portal by Aaron that uses event portal designer APIs to get insights into all the designer. Now, Let's switch over to Confluence. Another important tool in the SDLC is uh, Scope is Confluence, a collaboration tool. Architects and developers collaborate via documenting their business process or technical requirements or design on Confluence. While doing so, it would be cool to get preview of the event portal design time objects being discussed on the page within the Confluence. Right? That's exactly what it is. Uh, so just like IntelliJ, Confluence also requires a, a token. So let me show you. First, how do you get access to this uh, plugin? As always, no, uh, this plugin is also uh, open source, Solus Confluence Roadmap in the GitHub. So here you get all the details about what this plugin is about and uh, how to install it, how to use it. Unlike IntelliJ, it is a multi-user platform. Confluence is a multi-user platform. That means every single user will have to register their own token. Right? So let me head over to Confluence. So uh, just a quick, you know, it's available in the marketplace as a Confluence admin, you would be able to install that on the instance, basically the plugin on your instance, right? So I'm here, um, this is my test page. As a first step, I need to make sure that I update my token, right? So token manager, right now, it doesn't have any token. I'm going to register the token. Basically, I copy paste the token and my app is set and ready for use. So what do I mean by ready for use? Let me Go to this page. And before I do, let me showcase some sample pages that we have. Um, for example, I have this uh, page created with the uh, um, macros invoked on a couple of URLs. Right? So you can see here it fetches all the details captured by this URL. By the way, the interaction is based on uh, an input of a valid event portal URL, right? So what the app does is, or the plugin does is, behind the scene, it passes this URL, identifies the underlying event portal resource, 
and invoke appropriate REST APIs. Right? Whatever the data comes in, it nicely lays it out in this visual tile or layout. Okay. So um, you can have any number of macros invoked. And let me show you how to invoke macros. So first of all, you need to be in the edit mode. So I'm going to edit mode of this test page. All right. So just by typing the slash command, it will bring up the list of all the plugins available for you. So I'm saying Solus event portal. Yep, obviously it's going to start out with the MP URL because you know you haven't specified anything yet. Let me head to this. I will take this uh, um, what do you call open this application domain. So I, I'm interested in knowing about this Acme Retail Store operations because that's what I'm documenting in Confluent. So I'll take this URL, okay, and I head to this uh, page and click on this pencil icon. Just paste the URL. Now, behind the scene, it's going to validate the URL and identify the resource, fetch the detail by invoking appropriate REST APIs, and present it in this nice UI. Right? The moment I publish it, it becomes available for anybody, you know, be the author or the viewer or any other collaborator. They will see this web URL. The only difference is their respective token would be used to invoke the REST APIs. If the token doesn't have appropriate permission, then it will be an error, right? So uh, as you're seeing this detail, it's just not giving the details of the application, but also the, the related information. Here it's about the versions, okay? I want to fetch all the versions of this application. So behind the scene, it goes and invokes the uh, 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 APIs to fetch the version details. And with this version details, it makes it, a, uh, it presents a very readable format of the content. You know, um, description, produced events, consumed events, consumers, and so on. And any point in time, when you click on this external uh, open icon, it's going to open the resource detail page if you have logged in and if you have access to that. Right? So that's how the Confluence plugin works, right? Now, <clears throat> so what are we looking at, right? We can use REST APIs to build plugins or application, right? And the, the two use cases that we saw is a plugin to an external application where we want to present event portal uh, uh, resource details in real time, okay? But you may have a requirement to build a standalone application serving some custom requirement, you know, maybe managing um, lifecycle resources or maybe uh, managing your EDA design time objects, right? Everything is possible. What makes it possible is the availability of APIs and the standard approach towards using these APIs to build this application with ease. Um, that's about it from the Cloud REST APIs. Thank you. Please do check out the link that appears at the top to see my other video with detailed demo on installation and usage of Confluence plugin for Event Portal.